not quite. Again, the gap opens up. And the gap opens up even more to third position. Greg Moore in third place, with De Ferran in fourth, Bazell in fifth. Zanardi's popped up to sixth position now, ahead of Jimmy Vassa seventh, Richie Hearn is eighth. It's a good run from Richie Hearn, another Lola-mounted driver. And uh, ninth place for Scott Pruitt, tenth place for PJ Jones at the moment. Mark Blundell running in twelfth position. But uh, he's just behind Herter as well. Remember, Brian Herter made an extra stop, as did Alonso Jr., who's down in 13th position. Well, whether that proves to be the right thing to do or not, we're just going to have to wait and see. Well, I, I think uh, Junior and Pruitt are in a very good situation. I mean, most of these guys have got to stop again. Most of them have to. And with that uh, prolonged piano just now, it's uh, made both uh, Junior and uh, Pruitt safe. They don't need to come in again. Well, on the other hand, if there's another yellow, then, of course, that could change things around completely again. Of course. But they said they'll be up at the front, so they'll be, you know, one and two, I imagine. That's right, yeah, so, so uh, everyone else will be behind them yeah, in the queue. Exactly. Greg Moore hunt, fending off Gilles de Ferran at the moment without too much difficulty. You on board with Gilles de Ferran. And uh, chasing after the Canadian. These two battled last year a little bit at one point during the race. And Moore, who came up to lead much of the race until just uh, a little way to go, 18 laps to go there were, when he was cruelly robbed with uh, a silly little electrical problem, but that's often the case. It only takes one little wire breaking down to rob you of the chance for a win, and that's what happened to Greg Moore last year. Richie Hearn very close to the wall at the back of that particular group, as Ray Hal continues to lead the way ahead of Paul Tracy. And it's looking harder and harder for anybody to match Rahal or to actually get past him. They can hold him, but they can't seem to get past him. I was interested in what you said, and you're absolutely right. I mean, Tracy comes out right on his tail. But uh, we've seen several in-car in -car shots where people were able to draft. That means a slipstream and actually catch people, as we're seeing there with, uh, behind Greg Moore. But it, they... The Penske's don't seem to be able to do that. It may be that they've just got that bit too much down for us. It may be that Ray Hulk's coming out of the corner a little bit quicker. Yeah, it certainly seems as though he's struggling to, to really make that move that, uh, to get alongside Ray Hal as we go on back on board with Gilles de Ferran. But certainly Little Al and uh, Tracy, the two Penske cars are working extremely well. Well done, Paul. Further back, Alex Zanardi and Jimmy Vassa. Zanardi now running in fifth position, having moved up a little bit. So it's been a good afternoon's work so far for Zanardi. He's not been in one of his uh, dramatic, uh, faster than anybody else modes today quite. They haven't quite had the setup of the car to be able to do that. But he's done well. Remember, he started right at the back of the field. And now he's up there in fifth place. And uh, Jimmy Vassa is in seventh place. So still an excellent effort. So, Rahal, Tracy, Moore, then at Deferrin as they flash past once again. 109 laps completed now. Just uh, 24 laps still to go. And can Rahal hold off Paul Tracy to the end? Now, watch Scott Pruitt. Pruitt's on a bit of a move here. Trying to find a way past Jimmy Fassa by the looks of things. It's the battle for seventh place. And Pruitt looking good. And as we know, in terms of strategy, he's in good shape as well. There he is in eighth place, but he's very quick. Ford Power here versus Honda Power, remember? Both of them on Firestones, both in Reynard chassis, and through goes Scott Pruitt, even before they got to the second kick. Yeah, that was a telltale. If, if the Penske chassis could do that, they'd be long gone. Yes, but it doesn't seem to work for them, but Pruitt is definitely racing well here. And that's popped him up into seventh place now, behind teammate Raul Bazell. You see the two Brahma cars running almost in tandem now. Raul Bazell had a little bit of a disappointing qualifying session, but another Brazilian who's still up there. De Ferran is still top Brazilian at the moment, keeping the fans happy. Just off to a podium position. He's in fourth place, and Raul Bazell in sixth place. But watch out for number 20, Scott Pruitt. Winner of the Surface Paradise race this year. Second in the championship coming into this race, but he's already seen Michael Andretti retire. And even if Scott finishes where he is now, then he's heading to lead the championship once again. So Scott Pruitt has to bear that in mind. He doesn't want to make any rash moves, but he's obviously got a car that's working extremely well. Remember, Paul Tracy, 
third place in the championship coming into this race, only two points behind Pruitt. So if Tracy stays where he is in second place, then in fact Tracy would go to the head of the table and Pruitt would be in second place. Zanardi wouldn't be too far behind either and it would be Michael Andretti losing out the most. We will have to wait and see how things settle down towards the end of the race. But uh, for Tracy, perhaps he will be more keen on scoring the points for second position and taking the championship lead and he will be in a risky manoeuvre to get past Bobby Rahal. I think we're in, what, seven or eight laps? Maybe slightly less from the final pit stop for everybody. And after that, you know, we're going to see what the race is down in a while. Looking at it logically, you'd say it's going to be a little out and through it. We shall see. We shall see, yes, <laughs> what turns out. There goes Ray Hal, Tracy, Moore, DeFerrin. Still, the positions hold the same. Behind them, Zanardi in fifth place. Everybody perhaps building them up, themselves up to the, the final effort, the last charge. Nobody seems to have got into too much trouble on the oil that was laid there when Walter Salah's car blew up. There you see Greg Moore started eighth, now in third place. Fastest lap, 166 miles per hour. And uh, then in the background you can see the two Brahma cars, the yellow and red cars have closed up to one another once again. Bazell coming under increasing pressure from Scott Pruitt. There they go, flashing past the camera. Gilda Ferran still not able to close up that gap anymore to Greg Moore ahead of him. The 21-year-old Canadian who's very much uh, worked his way up through the ranks in Canadian and American motorsport. That uh, Indy Lights championship that he took in 1995. And a remarkable performance, 10 victories he took throughout the course of that season. It's interesting for me because we, we finished our football season a week ago today you know, sort of in relaxed mode. About three months of you know, relative peace anyway. And these guys just starting out on the season. It's strange in the juxtaposition of the two seasons. The different, uh, the different sports, the different seasons, but it's still very early days in this championship, Robin. There's no doubt about that. Uh, too early to call uh, who's going to come out on the top of the table in the PPG Kart Series, but Andretti has been looking good this year, but Scott Pruitt, as we've seen here, there he is on board with him, a consistent finisher, and that's that's really what it's it's all about, isn't it? You've got to keep finishing yeah. consistently. Yeah, yeah, you know, with, with uh, you know, Vassar's record, I mean, this is going to be his 26. I don't want to put the kiss of death on it, but I mean, uh, it's going to be his 26th secondary finish, and he finishes up there in the boat, so, as you said. People are criticising, they say, well, he finishes without undue speed. But you've seen the sort of accidents that people get into. And he's got the wit to avoid them. But sort of, he obviously can anticipate, you know, when someone's going to do a pretty stupid or over-aggressive manoeuvre and get out of the way, which uh, one or two drivers notoriously can't. That's right, that's right. Well, uh, Scott Pruitt is a similar case. He had a bit of a disappointing run in Nazareth last race out. Scott was only in 10th position at the end of it, but again scored some points there. Had that win in Surfers Paradise, remember. He was third in Long Beach as well, fifth in Homestead. And Pruitt, who's only had two cart wins in his career, one of those coming this year, but lying second in the championship. He finished third here last year, so he obviously likes this track, goes well on this circuit. And, uh, well, just keep an eye on him throughout the rest of the race. Back at the Rio 400, and the situation remains the same. Bobby Rahal still leads from Paul Tracy with Greg Moore third, Gilles de Ferrand fourth, Alex Zanardi in fifth place, Raul Bozell sixth, then Scott Pruitt in seventh, Brian Herter is eighth, Jimmy Vassar ninth, and Mark Blundell in tenth place. Last two point scorers at the moment are Alan Unser Jr. and Richie Hearn. There are just ten laps to go, and the front runners are going to try and eke it out to the flag. They're going to try and make it on the fuel, but it's going to be very, very tight indeed to see whether they can make it under green flag conditions. They'll be uh, crossing just about everything there is in the pit lane at the moment because Rahal and Tracy do not want to have to come into the pits to make a stop, but it is going to be close. Yeah, it sure is. And by our calculations, they, they're running on air. They're very nearly air. Whilst you were in the commercial, we saw some shots of uh, Tracy coming up behind Rahal. And I know you're breaking from 200 miles an hour to 100 miles an hour, so you, your time gap means that you keep about the same, you halve the distance. 
But Tracy was all over Ray Howe, but just couldn't take him out of the straight. But it was very interesting, towards the end of the straight, Tracy would pull out as if to get some more cooling or something like that in the engine. Well, doesn't seem to be uh, working his way any closer to Ray Hal. Ray Hal has just dominated here this afternoon so far. And uh, with just something like eight laps to go, it looks as though he's going to be able to hold on to take victory here. What a fantastic achievement if he can do so. But let's not count the chickens too soon because uh, there's still a few laps to go. The fuel is marginal to say the least. And Ray Hal and Tracy are hoping to make it through. More in third place. And then Deferron in fourth position. It's been a remarkably calm race, really, in the latter stages. The first part of the race opened up with numerous yellow flags, incidents, spins, crashes of all sorts. But this latter part of the race has really settled down into a rhythm. But Bobby Rahal has dictated the rhythm ahead of uh, Tracy and the others and just controlled the race. Absolutely superb performance so far. There are two or three tricks you can do to conserve fuel in these sort of situations. One is obviously drive the car very carefully and smoothly. There you see the Penske all over Rahal. Um, one is drive it smoothly. Second is you can actually adjust the mixture. You can lean it off. That loses your power and tends to make the engine run hot, which maybe is what we're seeing a little bit from, uh, uh, from Tracy. And the, the third one is do what is called short shifting, which means you don't use the full power of the engine. Instead of you change gear a thousand miles below its maximum, that actually conserves uh, fuel. And these slower corners as well, they have a little bit of option of taking them in either the third or fourth. Yeah. So a similar thing there, perhaps just running yeah. it in fourth gear just here, for example. Maybe that's why Ray Howell's a little slow in, although then he wouldn't have the acceleration out either. So. Sure. Seems, uh, seems a little different, difficult to explain exactly how Ray Howell's managing to stay so ahead so well of uh, Paul Tracy, but the car just seems to be letting him do that. Absolutely brilliantly set up, and the whole team have done a superb job. We saw Brian Herter running well earlier, but he made a, a different pit stop, and he lies down in eighth position now. Uh, so he was slightly out of sequence with the others earlier on in the race, and that's dropped him down, but still an excellent performance from the team. With just a few laps to go, Bobby Rahal looking set to take victory here. If he can just hold on to it all, and if Paul Tracy can't find that little extra bit of gap that he's been looking for just about the whole race long. Rahal finished sixth here last year. Best result of the this year so far was indeed last time out at Nazareth when he finished in sixth place. But this would be quite some achievement to take the victory. As I mentioned, first time in five years for him. And he was last champion in 1992. He didn't run on this Rio track then. It's only the second year it's been run, but I should think Bobby will be uh, doing a bit more than dancing the samba tonight if he uh, if he manages to take the victory here. It'd be very interesting to talk to both of these two after the race. I think they've got a lot to say. And not the bad way. And they're both driven magnificently. And all credit to Tracy, being slightly eccentric at the start, but it's very well, very smoothly, and yep. very quickly since. Get and the car together. Yeah, Just three laps to go now for Bobby Rahal. Can he hold off the Canadian that little bit longer? It's often uh, forgotten that Bobby actually did a little bit of Formula One, drove uh, a couple of Grand Prix for the Wolf team at Watkins Glen and Montreal back in 1978. Did a lot of Can-Am racing as well, but the sports cars. He won the Daytona 24-hour race uh, many moons ago. Made his IndyCar debut back in 1982. And then the first of his three championships came in 1986. Second title was the following year, 87. Then there was a bit of a lean spell until that 1992 championship winning season that saw him take four victories. Look at the pit crew there. They are nervous and somebody's run out of fuel. It's happened, Robin, just as you said. It's Gilles de Ferran who's run out of fuel. But are the others going to make it? Are they going to get round on the fuel they've been allowed? Gilles de Ferran, the calculation doesn't work for him. Is it going to work for Rahal? Is it going to work for Paul Tracy? They're so close now. Take the white flag. Will Rahal slow down? Has he? I think he slowed down a little bit more even than usual. And Paul Tracy's coming round. Paul Tracy's taking the lead. Bobby Rahal is running out of fuel. The calculations didn't work. Oh no, Bobby Rahal goes on to the last lap. It's Paul Tracy who takes the lead. But can the Penske make it round the final 1.8 miles on their fuel calculation? Bobby Rahal 
do you believe it? He came so close to winning for the first time in such a long time. But it's Paul Tracy, the winner 